I caught my friend cheating. And I did not confront her for what she did. Because I was scared to do the right thing. Did this ever happen to you also? When you saw that something wrong is being done, but you did not do anything anyway. Because you were scared. Or you're just really shy. You know what? This is what I realized. When I allow the person I love to do the wrong thing, is not the loving thing to do. Well, there is a character in the Bible that we will learn later in which he saw the people doing something wrong, but he did not do anything anyway. Instead, he tolerated the people in sinning and God was not pleased. Is it also safe to say that God is not pleased every time we tolerate sin and we do not do anything about it? The most loving thing to do is to confront the person and lead them in God's truth. But as we get to know more about this character in the Bible, could we just ready our hearts and even our minds as we worship God and as we get to learn more about this story in His Word today? Let's pray. God, sometimes doing the right thing is hard. But God, thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your strength. That even if we don't feel like it, even if it's hard to do the right thing, you will be the one to empower us and to give us the wisdom how to do and what to do. But Lord, um, we just lift up to you every time we are tempted and we are scared. We just lift up to you our feelings of... uh, fear or feelings of intimidation because we think that we cannot do it. But by your grace, God, enable us, Lord, so that we can point people back to you and ultimately you will be glorified. Lord, uh, we just want to thank you in advance for what you're about to show in our hearts and as you are about to enlighten our minds through your word, God. And as we study this character in the Bible, may you teach us how to do the right thing and not to tolerate sin so that we can glorify you and that we can point people back to you, the God of truth and the God of righteousness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See you in the huddle after the premiere. Teacher Annika and I'm Teacher Pao. Welcome, Welcome to, to Kids, Kids Church, Church for All Ages. Ages. Shout out to Emmanuel Zion Almaroto and also to the ENC Fort family. We're still in Hotel Kimberly Tagaytay and we are on the third week of Kids Leadership Academy Year 2. And today we are going to play another game. It's going to be a scavenger hunt. Well, hidden in this area are small plastic toys that our players need to find in 90 seconds. But the catch is, we have to carefully check and inspect that the toys are clean without any markings. When the time is up, we'll count how many we have. If a team accidentally includes a dirty mark, Boy, this will be deducted from the total score. Are you ready, Lions? Let's go, Wild Wolverines!
Wild Wolverines first. One. Two. Oh, but 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 okay. we have to check if okay. there's no X. One. Okay. Two. Two. Three. Or you guys want to see? Three. Four. four five. five. No X. No X. All right. Okay. It's the legendary line. Oh, friend. let's see this. All right. One, One. two, three. No X. No X. Let's see. Huh? <laughs> There's red mark. No. There's a red mark. Not an X. Ay, nakatago. Is that an X? Oh, it's an oh. X! Yes! Okay, we have to see. Two. Two. <laughs> okay, one. One. Kasi one minus one. Alright. Oh. Two. Three. <laughs> X. No. Four. Where? 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 <laughs> Five, six. I think it's inside the ano uh, their tummy. <laughs> seven. Oh! Is it? No, it's not. It's not. It's, it's not, not, not. Seven. Yay! <laughs> Congratulations, Team Legendary Lions! You found the toys without the marks on them. Ah, oh, thank you. <laughs> But we had to carefully inspect and identify the clean toys and the dirty toys. But you know what? Our lesson today is about not accepting nor tolerating sin. We must be able to set aside sin and identify it as wrong. We are going to look at another leader who made the mistake of ignoring the sin that people were committing. But before we look into that, let's all ready our hearts as we worship God. For a broken world that is far from you, fill us up, pour us out to be your hands and feet, O oh Lord. You have accepted us, chosen us, and have redeemed us and forgiven us. And we ask you, Lord, that out of gratitude, 
for the love that you shower us every day. May we honor you. May we please you with how we live our lives. And as we learn more about you today, may this time of worship bring glory and honor to your name. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Another way we can worship God is through giving. So you may give your tithe and offering by following the instructions flashed on the screen. I've prepared many activities to make this a fun and memorable school year. Jimbo, as class treasurer, I just want to inform you about how things have always ran around here. So I've collected about 50 pesos from every student in our arts and crafts supplies, but we will only use the 40 pesos of that money for arts and crafts. 10 pesos will be used for ice cream. This is how we've been done every year. But the whole 50 pesos is supposed to go into arts and crafts. That is what we said we collected it for. You don't want to disrupt the system, Josh. Other class officials in the higher levels are doing this. And if they find out you're the reason behind it stopping, I'm just saying it could be a very, very difficult grade school experience for you. Hmm. Good day, Jimbo. It seems you're about to turn a blind eye to sin. Let me tell you of someone who did exactly that. Jotham was 25 years old when he became king of Israel. He did everything that the Lord said was right. And like his father Uzziah, he obeyed God. How are things in the kingdom today? They are good and well, my king. However, we notice that more and more altars of false gods have been built recently. Are the people happy? I guess. Then let's just continue to do good work and leave them be. Jotham may have not built the altar of false gods, but he sure allowed the altars to multiply in his kingdom. Because of this, he allowed his people to sin. His tolerance of sin may have a stretch to his household as his son, who replaced him as king. His tolerance of sin may have stretched to his household, as his son who replaced him as king, Ahaz, was one of the most evil kings of Judah. Tim, I like you. In fact, I like you so much that I can't see you and our whole class continues to do these wrong things. Because of this, I will do my best to make sure the money is used correctly. There are so many things that can happen to you in our whole class. We can get in trouble, but most of all, we aren't giving God the honor that He deserves. But it's always been this way. Just think about it, Tim. Well, I think you're no fun. Well, Tim, I was hoping you'd agree with Jimbo. I'll find out who else is in on this. And unfortunately, there will be consequences. As for you, Jimbo, I personally will see to it that you succeed as class president. You have earned my trust here today with what you have said. What do you think would happen to Tim? Stay tuned for the last episode of Kids Leadership Academy with our heroes Jimbo and Widget. Hi kids, I'm Pastor Bodhi and today I will be your teacher. There's a saying that goes, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. But what happens when we see our family members or friends doing evil? Will we just pretend not to see it, not to hear it, and not speak about it? As we are learning more about leadership, I ask you kids, is that what a good leader does? I know of a king in the Bible who followed all the Lord's commandments so well, but allowed his people to disobey it. Let's read from 2 Kings chapter 15, verses 33 to 35. Jotham was 25 years old when he became king. He ruled 16 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jerusha, daughter of Zadok. Jotham did what the Lord said was right. He obeyed God just as his father Uzziah had done. But the places where false gods were worshipped were not removed, and the people still made sacrifices and burned incense there. Jotham rebuilt the upper gate of the temple of the Lord. Jotham, like his father, King Uzziah, was a man who followed God's commandments. He was a good king, but not perfect. He also had a share of shortcomings. Under his watch, 
the people of Judah turned to other gods, praying to them, offering sacrifices to them. Do you remember the commandment that says, we should not worship other gods? The people of Judah were breaking it. They were living in sin. What did King Jotham do about this? Well, he built the upper gate of the temple of the Lord, which showed that he still worshiped God and didn't join his people in their idolatry, but he turned a blind eye to what they were doing. He pretended not to see their sin. As the king or the father of Judah, who was assigned to watch over its people, it was part of King Jotham's responsibility to make sure that not only he, but all the people of Judah honored God. What should King Jotham have done? What should he have done? When we go back to verse 35, it says, but the places where false gods were worshipped were not removed. That is what he should have done. As he worked on the house of the Lord, he should have taken down the houses of the false gods that his people were worshipping. Instead of tolerating the sin of his people, he should have stopped them and helped them be restored to God. Kids, by not tolerating sin, we are helping people obey God and bring Him glory. Good leaders are brave and loving enough to tell the people around them if they're doing something wrong, especially if it affects their relationship with God. We don't want our friends and family to hurt God, right? This is not just the responsibility of kings or presidents or parents who are called to watch over people, but of all believers who are called to look out for each other. That's you and that's me. When we see our family members and friends sinning, we shouldn't ignore it. We should make them aware of it so that they could change their ways. And kids, we have to be careful not to act like policemen saying, that's wrong, you should be punished. You sinned, you should pay for that. That's not the way to do it. We should not shame or condemn people, but lovingly point out what's wrong, encourage them to say sorry to God, and encourage them to change their ways. We do that because we love our family and friends enough to save them from the consequences of their wrong actions. King Jotham made sure that he followed God's commandments, but he failed to help the people he was leading to do the same. Remember, good leaders are not just concerned about themselves, but also the welfare of the people around them. And kids, you don't need to wait to be a leader to do that. You could already start practicing that today. Do not tolerate sin. As we honor God, let us also help others honor Him. Let's remember our power truth, saying, I will train to be a good leader who will do great things for God and people. Can you say that with me? I will train to be a good leader who will do great things for God and people. And our power verse from Philippians 2, 3 to 4 says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others.
serve and worship a holy God who cannot tolerate sin. So we shouldn't tolerate it as well. And we are so thankful because even though we sin, we are made holy because of Jesus Christ. He paid for our sins and He gives us forgiveness so that we could be made right with God. As we have received Jesus and believed in Him, I pray that we would help others know, receive, and honor Him as well. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for your great love for each and every one of us. And we thank you for sending Jesus so that we sinners can be forgiven and be made holy. With you giving us your holiness, I pray that you would empower us to live it out as well and help others honor you. I pray for boldness and faith for each and every kid watching this video. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the Bible times, people used to pick the best and purest sheep and lambs to sacrifice as payment for their sin. Well, good news for the sheep, no one needs to sacrifice them today. Jesus paid the penalty of our sin so we can be right with God. Knowing that He did this, let's all do our best to honor His sacrifice by staying away from sin. So when we see our family and friends sin, let's all lovingly and gently call them out. Let's not tolerate sin. You can tell them that what they're doing can land them in trouble or even worse, hurt their relationship with God. For our family con, here's the question. How can you help people obey God? Talk about it with your family. See you next week. Bye! Welcome to Craft Time with Teacher Plum. That's me. First, I want to give a shout out to Charlie Lagare and to Andrens Kalingasan. And now it's time to announce our raffle winners for the month of March. It's raffle time! We're picking three winners for the month of February who will receive their craft kits from Victory Kids Fort. So are you ready? I have the box in front of me and we're gonna draw three names. Let's see, the first winner... Congratulations to Faith and Neo Aquino! The next craft kit goes to... Let's read this! To Faye Manangan! Congratulations, Faye! And the last winner will be... Okay, I'm not gonna look. Ready? Congratulations to Kaden Bautista! So our staff will be reaching out to you via email, so please stay tuned.
I look like a pirate, don't I? But we aren't pretending to be pirates today. We are making this craft to remind us not to turn a blind eye or ignore when people around us are sinning. So turning a blind eye means pretending not to notice, especially something bad that happens around you. Let's always remember our lesson today. By not tolerating sin, we are actually helping people obey God and bring Him glory. Now let's get crafting and make this craft! To make our eye patch, we will need a circular object. So I'm going to use this paper cup again. We'll also need some black paper, a marker, or maybe a pen that you can actually see when you mark this black paper. We'll also need a pair of scissors, but be very careful with your scissors. We need some double-sided tape and some string or some ribbon. So if you don't have ribbon, you can always use yarn. And let's begin! Even though this craft is very easy to make, it's actually super fun to play with. So to make this craft, let's take our paper cup and using our marker, we are going to draw two circles that are touching each other at one point. So it's going to look like this. It's going to look like the number 8. So make sure that the circles are actually touching. So I switched my marker to this white crayon. You can actually see how the circles are gonna look like. So as I've said a while ago, it actually looks like the number eight. So once you have that drawn onto your black paper, take your pair of scissors or ask help from your mom or your dad or any adult in your house and cut this except for the center where they meet. So we're gonna cut a figure eight or a number eight out of this black paper. Be careful not to cut this part. Cut along the white crayon. And now here we have our number eight or our two circles that are sticking together. Next thing that we want to do is we want to fold this in half so it looks like one circle. So you may not see it, but this is where the two circles join. And once you've folded this into one circle, make sure you're holding this area where the two circles meet and cut just the top of this circle to make our eye patch. So doesn't it look like an eye patch already? So once we have that over here, we can add our double-sided tape and stick it to one side of the circle. So I think I'm going to use around two pieces of double-sided tape or just the top and the bottom of the eye patch. And when we remove the double-sided tape film, before we actually close this eye patch and seal it, let's take our string and make sure that you've already measured it to the size of your head. And we are going to stick it on the top like this. So once we close it, our eye patch is already done. And it's that easy. Arg! We're now done with our easy craft. And I'm sure you look like cool pirates with your eye patches. But again, we made these eye patches to remind us not to turn a blind eye to sin. <laughs> Get it? Because turning a blind eye, as I've said a while ago, means that you will pretend not to notice something. And usually it's something bad, like, oops, I didn't see anything, I didn't see what you did. But good leaders don't turn a blind eye to sin. When we notice our loved ones doing something that is not pleasing to God, we will tell them in love that what they are doing could land them in trouble or harm the relationship with God. I can't wait to see your versions of the eye patch and especially your pictures of wearing the eye patch. So remember to send your photos to our email address, kidsfort at victory.org.ph. The email address flashed on the screen. Please send them by Monday, 5 p.m. 
each photo will be one raffle entry for our raffle giveaway for the month of March. And note to parents, by sending your photo to our email address, you are allowing Victory Fort to use these images in social media posts. If you wish to be excluded in the social media posts, kindly indicate in your email. And that's it for craft time for today. See you next week, kids. Bye!